a properly engineered and constructed foundation is absolutely necessary to the structural integrity of any house. But it is especially important if you are going to be constructing your house in an earthquake prone zone. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm just saying my piece. Glad you could join us. Today we are going to talk about the necessity of having a strong and properly engineered foundation, especially if you're building in an earthquake prone zone. What is necessary? What goes into the, the foundation, why the foundation is built like that. And we're going to talk about a more modern way of constructing not just your foundation, but the amount of steel that you put into your wall, the amount of steel that we're going to need in the foundation in this particular build, how it is done, why it is done, and all of that. But before we do that, we'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel, remind you also to hit that notification bell after you subscribe so you will get your notification. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It also and encourages us to make more and better videos. Thank you. We are going to touch also on what I have been teasing for a while and that is how to reduce the amount of steel inside of your construction and still get the same amount of rigidity and structural integrity as you would had you used the traditional column. In an earthquake zone, what you want to do is have the foundation of your building be as rigid and as solid as possible because while the earth that you build on may appear to be solid it is not it consists of gravel sand loose dirt all that sort of thing in an earthquake there is something called liquefaction literally liquefaction is when the earth becomes like a liquid and begin to move around when you have strong earthquake waves moving through the earth when that happens the earthquake will impart excessive amounts of forces into your building and if you do not have a strong foundation or if your foundation is not of the proper type then your building will come apart it will simply crumble conventionally the way to combat that has been to use extremely strong columns but conversely many people have ignored the necessity for having extremely strong foundations attached to those columns and without the foundation being as strong as the columns then the ability of your structure to resist Resist the earthquake will be severely diminished. But if the building is built on a solid concrete slab, then that solid concrete slab will stand up. Your building may shake, it may move from side to side, but as far as the integrity of the building is concerned, the entire building will remain together because the foundation on which it sits is completely solid. So to make that happen, what we will do, we will not go the traditional route of putting matting inside of your foundation at the very bottom and then pour concrete on top of that and then on top of that you build your building. That is not the right way to go. What we are going to do is put rebar cages into the concrete, into the foundation. We are going to tie those together in what's called a monolithic slab. Then we are going to build the building on top of that. That way you do not need to use all that massive amounts of steel inside of your columns. You simply need to ensure that the belting that goes around your building is sufficiently strong and that your walls are properly tied into those beltings and properly tied into your foundation and that will give you an extremely rigid structure that will not come apart in a normal mild earthquake such as those that we generally have in the Caribbean. With that in mind, let us now talk about the requirements of this particular design. The basic outline of the foundation is already rectangular. Each room within the foundation is also rectangular. So the basic foundation of the building will all be tied into all these sub-rectangular structures and they will all come together to form a rigid and proper foundation upon which your building will sit. The trenches will be excavated according to the plan of the various rooms and the foundation will be poured in those excavated trenches. The only difference between what I do here and what is normally done is that within those excavated trenches you would put a matting. I do not do that. I do not suggest you do that because the matting does not provide the sort of structural rigidity that is necessary to resist an earthquake. What you will do instead is to form your 
for rebar cages, insert those rebar cages into your trenches, normally where your mattings would go, and then you pour your concrete foundation onto that. So we are going to talk about the total length of rebar that you are going to need in this case. So you are going to have three lengths of 26 feet long rebar cage, two 22 foot lengths of rebar cage, and two 12 foot lengths of rebar cage. The total length of rebar cage you are going to need in this case for your entire foundation will be 146 feet. This rebar cage for your foundation will be constructed slightly different from the rebar cage that you would need for your columns. In the foundation rebar cage you are going to have five rebars. There will be two at the top of the cage and three at the bottom of the cage. So in this case the total length of rebar that you are going to need excluding overlap and there will be a lot of overlap will be 730 feet based on my basic calculation here as i said you have to remember that in a situation such as this you are going to have a lot of overlap and each overlap will be 20 inches so in each place where you have an overlap you will need an extra 40 inches of steel it must also be remembered when planning for your rebar cages that you are going to need a lot of stirrups. These are usually constructed from 5 8 rebar. You're going to need binding wire as well. So those are costs that must be taken into consideration when planning your build. As we have stated before, the traditional method of constructing a house in Jamaica is to construct columns. Your columns generally are constructed by first forming a rebar cage, then boxing that rebar cage, and then pouring concrete to form a column. And this is done in all sections wherever it is deemed to be necessary to have a column. If you're constructing a multi-story building, that is the way to go. But if you're only constructing a single story building with no intention of having a second story on top, that is essentially a waste of money. It's also a waste of time because constructing columns and waiting for those columns to cure, then removing all the board, getting the entire thing cleaned up, and then building your walls, you are wasting a lot of time. You're also also wasting a lot of money because the amount of steel that you have put into those columns is not really necessary given the fact that it's a single story building. So to begin, having constructed our properly engineered foundation, we are now going to begin our first course of blocks. Your first course of blocks will go all the way around your entire building and will outline also all the rooms that will be in that house. But to begin, we will construct the corners and the intersections where walls meet. Now in each corner we will not place what is called a traditional column. What we will do instead in each corner and in each intersection is to interlace your blocks. Where your blocks interlace there will be three pockets. Each pocket will have one rebar. Those three pockets with one rebar each will then be filled with high strength concrete. And we do that for the first four courses. Now the fifth course of blocks will be your bond beam, also called a belting. And you will construct those using bond blocks. It must also be remembered that your fifth course of block will also be window level. That is also known as a weak point. And that is why you will have a bond beam running around all the rooms that are inside of that construction. So essentially what you're doing is forming a very strong rectangle at that point with an extremely strong point that will interrupt the transfer of energy during an earthquake to the other parts of the building. Also, we're Wherever you have a window face, there will be a length of rebar running in all those block pockets going from top to bottom. And that window face and that block pocket will form a mini column. You will do the same with your door facings as well. So facing your door, there will be 
the block pockets. All those block pockets will have rebar running from top to bottom. And then those block pockets from top to bottom will be filled with high strength concrete as well. So wherever you have door facings, they will also have many columns on either side. Now, as for your walls, each block is 16 inches long. What you should have is your vertical rebars being placed 16 inches apart along the foundation so they will come up in the center of your block pockets. The net result of that is that every single block will have a rebar running through that. Now you continue with this all the way to the roof level of your house at which point the last course of blocks will be again your bond blocks. Now to get back to the bond blocks and the way those are used to make your bed you lay your course of bond blocks and those of course will be either be u-shaped or bond blocks of some sort you can use ordinary blocks where the centers have been knocked out laid end to end and so you will have that cavity that you can fill with high strength concrete now within those cavities you will then lay your lengths of steel making sure to have a toe at each end where there is an overlap. In the corners, you are going to double up your steel. So if you had only a single length of steel running down the walls in the bond blocks, you are going to have two lengths of steel within the corners. What that does is to provide an additional strengthening of those corners. And that is the way to construct your belting. And this is done, of course, for every single room. And we have a diagram here where we show you how to lay out the steel and when you get to the corners and the intersections of the walls and this is what you do you can have them either in l shape or l shaped and t shapes and uh, they provide extremely strong resistance to the transfer of energy throughout the wall this provides additional strength and rigidity and it contributes greatly to the structural integrity of your building so that is why you do not need these extremely strong columns when you are making a single story building the columns take time they take extra money because you have to buy the board that you're going to use to make the boxes pay a carpenter to do all this you are going to have to get pay a carpenter to remove those things whereas when you do it the way I have suggested you are eliminating all of that and you are not compromising the strength and the structural integrity of the building so I think that will do it thanks for watching hope I was able to help for those who are looking for a cheaper way of constructing a building hope I was able to help the do-it-yourself person who wants to construct his own home and don't forget to like subscribe and share the videos and as usual you all have a great day.